Hey everyone, my name is Delana Burns and I'm with you today on Live with Prima and I want to welcome everybody to the show and uh, today I want to show you the, if I can do this on the uh, canvas that I'm going to be creating uh, sort of a vintage canvas used in the brand new Bella Rouge collection um, I love the golds and reds and all in this collection so I'm um, going to go ahead and pan down I've got a lot to go over for this show so we want to go ahead and get started so uh, if you get seasick close your eyes just bear with me just one minute please just a second I'm going to kind of cover you up as we pan down I want to pan you down and turn you around so you can see in your direction um, now I'm just going to kind of move my table so I don't have to make you so dizzy one more little move with the camera and I think we're good um, may have to raise you up in just a minute but um, I think for now this view is looking good a um, few announcements for next week we have uh, Lee Moore will be doing some mini canvases using pre uh, Bear's new stencils and stamps so I know y'all will uh, enjoy that so be sure and join Lee Moore Thursday for that show um, so I want to go ahead and get started with the canvas and just kind of show you this is an 8 by 10 canvas and you can see it's layered up with lots of goodies and um, start with my paper layers the papers that I have used of course everything's going to fall on the floor the papers I've used I've kind of pre-cut but the paper numbers are 847128 847111 and the final paper sorry about that everything kind of tumbled to the floor the final paper we're going to be using is number 847135 and that's going to take care of our basic layers here as far as the canvas is concerned. You can see I've cut these and um, prepared these already for the for the show just for a time saver. The um, red piece is going to be our background piece. I'm using an 8x10 flat canvas and I hope y'all's lighting is good. It, it appears to be a little dark to me but going to raise the camera up just a little bit so um, bear with me one more minute while I'm adjusting this using an 8 by 10 flat canvas so what I'm going to do is just take my trusty Fabri-Tac and glue this right down to the actual canvas um, you can use the um, the actual what am I thinking? The matte gel or the gloss gel. If you like to glue this down, you can just cover your canvas with the gel and then put a layer also on your paper here and adhere it to your canvas with the gloss gel. For time, I just kind of wanted to use the Fabri-Tac just so I could get it adhered quickly. And the Fabri-Tac works very well, so um, it will stay forever once you've attached it. So feel free to use the Fabri-Tac. If you do have a little white show in which I do just a little bit um, right here, you can take your ink pad. I've already inked the edges. I'm using dark bark and uh, you can just ink your edges up. This is going to be framed so these edges are not going to show anyway so you, if you are a little off, it's not a problem. Totally disguise that. The next layer here that I'm going to use, I've actually cut to, I believe, a 7 by 9. It's 7 inches wide and 9 inches long. And I've actually used my distressor to distress the edges. Once I cut it to size, I used this little side edge of my distressor and just distressed it just a little. And I went in again with the dark bark before I did the distressing. And then I want to give it a little coat. Uh, and these chalk edgers just work really well gives you just a little bit of color this is a little bit of an older one so I can rub a little a little more to get a little more color they're a little more juicy when you first open them but this one has been used quite a bit so um, I can rub pretty hard to get that off but you can see I've got that for that layer this next layer here is six inches by about eight and a quarter inches 
and you can see I'm going to stack these up just about like this. First thing I want to do though is take my trusty cardboard and grab my scissors. I want to put a layer of cardboard between this back layer and I certainly could have cut this ahead. So I just want to add a piece of cardboard. I feel like I got started in such a hurry, Carrie. Please let me know if I um, if I miss anything. Also, as far as announcements go, the um, the kit is now available. It is the uh, special delivery kit called Sweet Cottage. Go to livewithprima.com to get yours. I took a peek at those and they are as gorgeous as ever. So um, you need to check those out. Always a, a huge value for $39.99. A $100 value this month. So really, really cool. Um, and it's a really great buy. So always beautiful stuff in those kits. So what I'm going to do is just Fabri-Tac again right to the back of that. And you see it's not as big as the actual piece of paper um, and that's totally okay. Just kind of want it popped up. Add a little more glue. My glue's getting a little old so it's thick. So what we want to do is just adhere this right down to the actual canvas on top of the red layer. And this is going to be all about the layers. And then this particular layer, I've got to remind myself, um, I did, I popped it up as well. So just want to cut another piece of the cardboard. And this is, I'm sure, from a box of something. I just, I save my boxes. I'm always getting shipping boxes and um, any cardboard that comes in the box to keep things from being bent or whatever, I save it all. So, I just, my chat's still not working. I wanted to see if I could read along. Hey, Paula. I think I said hey to Pam already and to Robbie. Hey, Debbie. Hey, Courtney. Okay. Y'all, I feel like I am going like 90 miles an hour. Okay, just add some more glue. Glue, glue everywhere. Oh, what did I say was a good deal? The good deal is the kit. The um, Am I talking that fast? The uh, special delivery kit, $39.99, and it's a $100 value. It's a fabulous deal. And it's gorgeous. I'm tempted every single month to get them myself. Okay. Okay, there we go. Next thing I want to do is, um, for our background layer, I have used some of the new Prima stamps. Um, Y'all are going to love these. They are, uh, and I, I totally lost the packaging in the mess here. Wipe away some of this. But um, tea stain, or um, actually coffee stain, is the one that I'm using. And you can see it's just like little circles of like um, a coffee stain would leave and also spills and the splatters one is called spills one is called splatters or paint splatters and literally that's exactly what it looks like but you have so much control with the stamps um, so what I'm going to do is just ink it up and let you know the first thing I did though before I actually ink I went ahead and added a layer and I hope you can see that um, and you may not. I added a layer of masking to this already. And I used just some of the modeling paste. I used some modeling paste. And I used stencil called Grungy Grid 962319. And just with a layer of the uh, modeling paste, I added just kind of randomly across the front of this just to give it a little texture. Okay, same, same text. Sorry about that. Um, just to give it some texture. So that was my first layer there. And I went ahead and dried that just for time. Um, to save a little time. The next thing I want to do is add a little of the... A few of these, I should say. Circle stamps here. 
and I'm going to use a, an actual archival ink because I don't want it mixing um, or moving when I add more layers here. So just ink it up with the archival ink and just, just a few areas I'm going to stamp. You see, I added this to an actual block. You don't have to use the block. Um, if you just want it in a few areas, in fact, I'm going to actually remove it from the block so I can just get a few places here and there using it. Just keep it inked up. But I love this. Um, I just love the fact of having the control. I'm, I'm not one to do a lot of just random um, or crazy mixed media. Uh, I love to see others do it and it works so well when everybody's playing with it and uh, it never ends up in the spot that I want it. So this is a perfect, perfect stamp for me. I get the distressed look and um, I'm in control. I'm in total control. So I just, I just want to add this just in a few places. Move on to our next stamp. And I may not use the block for it either. I just want to use this one here. And this one is, looks like paint splatters. It's just, um, and I'm going to use the archival ink as well. Just going to kind of ink it up. Not going to worry about using a actual block because I just kind of want to, and I'm using the uh, archival brown. It's just, uh, it's called a coffee color actually. Oh, that's kind of ironic. I didn't realize it was called coffee color. Coffee stain, coffee, coffee ink so that all works. But you can see I'm just going to kind of touch it in a few areas. I just want it to kind of peek out from behind the cluster that I'm going to add here in just a few minutes. And um, anyway, just, and here's another shape here of the actual splatters. A little bit more of a splatter from this one. And just want to kind of add just, and you can just kind of see, is this not completely fabulous? That you can do this. I absolutely love the fact that I can do this and I am in complete control. Okay, so that's about what I want to add as far as the um, splatters and the coffee stains go. At the moment I can always go back when I'm when I'm finished and add a little more. I'm going to dry that for just a second so give me just one minute let me dry this up and just be sure I don't want it to move I want it to kind of stay where it is I am going to go in and add some gesso and um, I've also got the uh, mica powder I have the teal mica powder that I want to use today so um, I'm loving these mica powders I'm just trying to watch the chat too okay now Paula, I see your I see your typing, and uh, I'm sorry I can't write, I can't read it. Okay, so dry that up for just a second. The next thing I want to do is kind of move this stuff out of my way, and I'm going to take a little bit of the modeling paste. I'm going to grab my spatula, move my rulers and my scissors and all that stuff out of my way. But I'm going to grab my spatula and take a little of the modeling paste. I just want just a little, probably not even that much. Probably got a little overkill there. But just a little of the modeling paste. And then I want to take just a little bit of the mica powder. Look at that, how pretty that is. It is very teal and very pretty. I want to grab my little pointy scissors. And I just want to dip just a little off. Can you kind of see from my... From my scissors okay, just a little I don't want to waste this because I love it a good idea to do too and I, I actually forgot to do that I took a little piece of saran wrap uh, when I made my sample and I because I didn't really know how much I wanted to use how much coverage I was going to need from this and I placed it on some saran wrap and just kind of folded it so that it didn't dry up before I was finished with the project. Then I could go back and use it. So just just a hint of something you might can do to um, stretch it so that you're not wasting it. So you can see, I want to add just a little bit more, still, still kind of 
kind of more white than I want. So I want to add one little more little scoop. I'm not going to use a lot of this. Um, this teal color is in the uh, paper, so I just want to bring a little of that out. So you can see how dark this gets. Um, this is just a really cool product. I am I'm really excited. Prima has come out with several colors um, so far. My favorite, I think, is the um, is the teal. I just I love this color teal. I know a few of you really do too. So what I want to do is go back in with my same um, grungy grid stencil nine six two three one nine. The number on this uh, mica powder, if I can actually see it, is 962487. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make specific little squares of color. I'm not going to do a lot. I just want to kind of touch here and there. Um, and at some point, just doing one little box. I like these little square shapes. And... Um, some places I want to maybe make three, but I don't want a lot. I just want to move this color around just a little bit. It's kind of hard to just get one square, so um, I'm good if it happens to grab two. I just want this color throughout my actual project. So just in a few random spots, and this is probably totally different spots than what I did on my um, sample, and it's okay. It's in a maybe in a specific, not in a specific spot, but sort of in the same area. It's just all the way around your page. You can see when you lift, you get just a few squares of that actual color. So what I want to do is clean up my mess here real quick. Grab a baby wipe. And I know I'm not going to be using any more of this, um, but like I said, if you if you do think you'll want more, um, you can always do this on a piece of saran wrap, on a little plastic baggie, or something you can seal, and then you can actually save your color uh, for later. So, um, always a good idea, just in case you might want to keep it till the end of your project. So, just keep that in mind. It was a, it was a good idea when I did it, and it really worked because I was able to go back and and use it and it wasn't all dried on me so the next thing I want to do is let's dry this up real quick just give it a second of heat you can see that's not a lot but um, it's going to be just enough to give me that touch of teal that I want I'm going to go back in kind of toward the end and add a little um, add a little gesso. I'm just going to sponge on a little gesso just to kind of dull this down some, give it a little more distressy look. And you know what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to have to pull up this top layer because I had intended to go ahead and add my ribbon before I glued it down so that is pretty dry so that's what I'm going to do I'm going to and uh, one of the reasons I love the Fabri-Tac is that you do have a few minutes of um, time to kind of pull it up if you need to so what I'm going to do is grab my trims I've used um, trim number 577 my numbers rubbed off I believe that is 070, Carrie. This is the um, buff weave trim, so I'm not, not quite sure about what that number is. That number has actually rubbed away. Um, a trick I have here is the um, tape. What I'm going to do is take it completely away from there because it keeps sticking down. I'm going to run this up and then across so I'm just going to give myself a little bit over go ahead and cut both pieces just a little bit over on both sides 
and y'all know I'm asymmetrical so I kind of want it a little bit to the left here so what I'm going to do is just grab my tape and so there's already glue there so that's helping um, I'm just going to tape that down tape here and this too I'm just going to tape that right down so you can see you can get it right where you want it make sure we have enough play in there so that it's not going to actually bend our thing but you can see this works perfectly I think I went a little lower than I needed to and I'm not ever worried if I don't get it back exactly like the sample it'll be very close and um, normally I say sisters and not twins so it never bothers me if it's a little bit different okay and again we're just taping that right down so you can see we get our we get our trims in place and we are sort of hassle free there then I'll, I'm using some of this uh, seam binding I love the love the seam binding um, Sharon and Carrie turned me on to this seam binding a long time ago and uh, what I want to do is just kind of crinkle it up in my hands I just want to kind of wad it in my palms of my hands there and give it a little bit of a wrinkly wrinkly look and again same thing just going to tape it down now if you're worried about your tape pulling up later on um, you may want to go back in with a little bit more glue I've not ever had a problem with that but um, if that concerns you go in with a little glue on top of your tape Fabri-Tac is the master I'm just going to tape this down I cut this a little long but that's okay it's just about meat in the back that's okay okay so that's about what we want there just about like that it's getting kind of hard to see okay, I'm gonna go back in with some more glue glue this down you see on a few of our ribbons we're getting some glue there so so that's good we want to glue it right down just be sure we kind of got that where we want it and you can kind of move that around it's not a it's not a permanent fix there um, for just a few minutes so you've got time so okay there we go we got that down move our mask off to the side move our scissors around out of the way so we got that okay the next thing I want to do just really quick is I want to grab some gesso this is a little bright to me a little extra bright and this is really grungy and distressy I'm just gonna take the the gesso with a just a round sponge brush just just one I happen just to have I'm just gonna dip it in just about that much and I'm gonna pounce it off on my mat I'm gonna get my get it pretty pretty well off and go back in just a little you don't want a lot you just want a little bit to kind of touch that touch that stamping touch that um, that teal color a little bit on the edges you can even go in on the red and the, the back little gold color paper just a little but just a little just to kind of tone that color down just a little bit gives it a little more agey and I like that white cast kind of coming through so there we have that I just want to wipe that mess up real quick love the nonstick mat and the baby wipes so we will lay that to the side okay the next thing we're going to do is kind of build our layers um, you can kind of see I've just got paper layers from the background building up 
I've also used, no, this is the chipboard and more package from the Bella Rouge. This is 579050. So what I want to do is pull out a few pieces and you can see I've used a couple of the ladies and the title and um, just a few things on here from the, and I love the ladies. The photo that I used of my mom and her sister and her, well actually it's, it's her, she doesn't have a sister. It's my mom and my great grandmother, my grandmother, and two of my great aunts. So it's all the ladies that um, sort of meant a lot to my mom growing up, and they they have all gone on. They've all gone on to heaven now. So it's a really special photo for me. Um, I just want to pull out a few pieces here, just a few of the flowers, and we've got the lady, one of the ladies, and. With the little perfume bottle, I kind of tucked it in right about here. Um, the beautiful word, and we've got another flower, a couple more flowers. And I'm not sure what all of this I'm going to use, but anyway, I just want to pull quite a bit out. Another lady, um, so that's what we're going to use from this chipboard pack. And you see, you have tons of pieces left, and you have the beautiful feathers. You actually have feathers that go with the chipboard. You can see these beautiful feathers. So um, the chipboard. And also you get some sequins. You can see the multicolored sequins. They're just gorgeous. Perfect match to the actual collection. Okay, we'll lay that off to the side. Okay. You can see our chipboard. So what I'm going to do with the chipboard, I'm going to grab my... I believe it's here. I'm going to grab my watercolor pencils and I want to grab a red. Love the watercolor pencils um, that Prima just came out with. So There's also a blender brush which I do not have yet. So I do have, um, I'm going to use a paintbrush for this. But what I'm going to do with the ladies, they are pretty, just, they're just black and white. So I want to add just a touch of color to them. So what I'm going to do is grab some water. I've just got a bottle of water here. And I'm going to dip my dip my brush in water. What I'm going to do is just literally, uh, Julie, Dutton, Julie Nutting actually did this on one of her um, actual live shows that she was doing. And it was like um, complete genius. So um, I've, I've done it ever since. It just really, you can just make you a little puddle of color just by wetting your brush and touching the actual pencil itself. And you can make a little puddle of color there. So you see, um, the red color is a really um, good color for this. And I just want to give just a little bit of color. Once you color these, can you show close up? Yes, I can, definitely. Okay, what I'm going to do is just touch the flower in her hat just a little bit. i got a little bit too much water on there, so let me grab a paper towel and dry up a little bit of that. But what I'm going to do is just going to touch this just a little. She's got a few flowers in her hat, and that's actually what I'm kind of trying to color is the flowers. And I'm not being real neat about it. I'm just giving it, just giving it a hint of color. So you can see with this one, just in her little, okay. Now with this one, she's wearing this really pretty kind of scarf around her neck. And that's what I'm going to touch with color on that one. Just a little bit, kind of around on both sides. So you can kind of see this gives this isn't this just amazing just a little bit just a pencil and just a little bit of water and uh, it makes these little chipboard pieces just pop so you can see that's kind of what I did there I want to just kind of dry them up just a little bit got a little puddling of water and can y'all see that can you see the 
and it needs to dry it's still a little wet but can you see the color that it allows it to have and it's just a really simple process to just okay I hope you're able to see that my 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 computer's going to sleep okay I'm gonna try to see if y'all got any conversation about that sorry this is not for some reason this chat is not keeping up yeah it is it I, it is kind of just in the little details um, and any color you can add any color to this chipboard um, having the pencils and um, it just makes it so easy to just add any color so and that little tip from Julie forever ago with um, touching the end of the pencil with the paintbrush is absolutely genius so um, I'm moving my table okay so that's what we're going to do with the chipboard next thing I'm going to do is start building my layers and I've just got layers of paper uh, in and behind my actual photo so what I want to do first is grab this um, frame and you can see there's two frames in this this is uh, from Timeless Memories number 579807 there were two frames in this original one I used the other frame so I'm gonna actually use the second frame that's in this pack for this one and um, what I'm gonna do is grab the frame out it's really pretty it doesn't have to be distressed or anything it is the perfect color and what I want to do is grab a photo so real quick I've got a few Got a few photos here that I can choose from. I can find the one that I actually need to use. Give me one second. Well, where is my photo? Sorry, guys. Give me one minute. Of course, that happens every time. I'm going to misplace something. Where are you, pictures? Well, I may have to I may have to move on without a photo, but let me see. I've got a little photo I'm sure here somewhere of my of my kids or somebody. So okay. I'm still looking. Y'all bear with me one minute. Sorry about that. I know it's here. Well, doesn't like I'm gonna find it, so Actually, I had a few choices that um, I could have. I could have actually used a couple of these. Um, these were suggestions from somebody earlier that uh, might have worked, but um, I didn't remember to print those in wallet size. And I did have one printed in a wallet size, but um, so what I'm going to do is just not worry about the photo and. Um, well, let's go ahead. Well, we can use this one. Sorry, it just appeared. Here's the photos I'm going to use. So, we won't we won't worry about these. Let me, you know, I can laugh because only Carrie is going to get why I use those other two pictures. And um, sorry, Carrie, but uh, I had to do it. Carrie is a Carrie is my friend, and Carrie is a funny, funny, funny woman. So. <laughs> She says I'm laughing so hard right now. And I'm, <laughs> so what I'm going to do is just kind of cut out the uh, little photo. And what I do is I print these kind of a little bit smaller than wallet size. Just so I can kind of fit them in. This is the original picture that I used. But I want to change the picture up this time. And I use kind of an older picture of my, my mom and daddy. And this is one that I've used on several other other projects as well but I have um, I have a lot of brothers and sisters I have five brothers and two sisters and so any of these second projects when I use pictures of family I can always um, I can always gift to one of my siblings so that um, that works for me so what I want to do is just add a little glue to the back of my frame I mean, it's, it is so funny. I, I don't know if Carrie is going to tell you all the story, but that is so funny. Um, I wished I had not lost my original picture. I kind of ruined it because I couldn't find my, my little wallet size photos. But anyway, so funny. So funny. I love working with Prima and I love, we have the best people to work with. Carrie is absolutely the best. So 
Um, okay, so there's our little frame, and you can see just really pretty, and it's a, it's a really good match for this. And um, I know it's, it's a different picture with, um, with, with my mom and dad in it this time. I did use all ladies on the other one, but I still like these little antique ladies, and I'm still going to use them the same way um, that I did. So I'm um, not going to change that up at all. You could. You could choose a different chip, a different chipboard or, um, you know, whatever you, you want to do for your background. But um, anyway, I'm, I'm fine with that. And I'm just kind of tearing this paper. Even these straight edges, I'm just going to tear the, going to tear the sides off. And um, just kind of in and behind my photo, I'm going to add several just pieces. And I've, I've got several pieces here that I can use. And I'm just kind of going to make them a little bigger than the back of the uh, frame itself. So you can see. And my white edges are kind of showing. So um, I don't want a lot of that white showing. So I'm going to cut some of it away. You can use your distressor on this as well. And um, also grab your ink. And... Um, I don't mind some of the white showing, but I just don't want that stark white in my background. So I'm going to ink the edges up just a little. Like I said, I'm going to just tear these edges off. And uh, in fact, what doesn't tear, I can just grab my distressor and distress it up a little bit. Carrie, I'm still really wanting to laugh. <laughs> I'm going to laugh when the show is over. That is just so funny. <laughs> so y'all have no idea. She, she had me going. She definitely had me going. I was ready to... I was ready for President's Month. So, okay. Just want to continue to distress and add just bits and pieces back here. Ink and ink and ink. And some of these are not very wide. They're a little longer than they are wide. I just want to kind of, kind of get them in there just for color. And just to have layers and color and all that good stuff. So, and what I want to do too, I want this to lay flat. So I'm going to add a little glue up under my layers of ribbon here, just so that kind of lays flat. Felt like it was kind of bulging, so kind of flatten that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab another piece of cardboard first. I want to go all the way under my layers with a piece of cardboard. And that's why I want to show you this uh, shadow box. Because this thing is going to be so thick that it would be impossible to get in behind glass. And then when you, even when you put it on a frame that has, that, you know, that's an open glass frame. Then it, then it is, kind of sticks out past the um, actual frame itself. So what I'm going to do is add a layer of red on the background and then add a piece of cardboard on top of that. So, and then I want to continue with my layers from there. So you can see kind of where I'm going with this. And I want to grab this gold kind of color here. And you can see I just I kind of just want this these colors to stick out. So just in and behind all this. More glue. Put this gold kind of in here. Just so you got color kind of your color is kind of represented everywhere. I want this red kind of represented over here. Let's pull this and slide this over here without ruining our ribbon. And if you do want more, like I think I need a little more here on the bottom, I'm going to tuck this, just this little sliver of red in just to kind of poke out right there. And y'all, this looks like a hot mess um, while you're doing it. But um, when you get your photo added and, and all that, you'll see that it, it just makes all the difference. So when you kind of add your photo on the top, I'm going in for more cardboard in behind our frame. I just want to add a little piece of cardboard. And what I like to do behind my photo before I add the cardboard, I'm going to just put a little piece of paper over my photo. I don't want the cardboard directly touching my photo. Um, just for archival purposes, you don't want, you don't want this non-acid touching your actual picture. 
And I want a pretty thin piece of cardboard behind here because I'm going to be tucking in and behind this frame as well. So just glue all this down. You can see it is it is like it is thick. So the first thing I want to do, I want to grab my let's grab my actual um, page so I can see what it did. What I like to do is tear off away from the sticky. I tear a layer past the sticky on these um, actual chipboard pieces because I don't want it to stick. I kind of want to, you know, manipulate it and elevate it a little bit in areas. Uh, so I, I just, I want that um, total sticky gone. So we've got that one there and then got another little chipboard piece here. And again, if you take this white layer off, you're going to get a whole sticky back. I take one layer beyond that sticky and just tear it completely off. And then I can add the glue where I want it. And you always want to add a little extra glue anyway um, to the back of these stickers because just in case they don't want to stick forever, I always add a little extra glue anyway. And so I'm just kind of tucking these in behind these layers here. I'm going to actually cut this one right across here because I just kind of want the flowers. I'll save that leaf portion for another project later. But I'm trying to build my cascade kind of up and I um, want that right about there. Our girl, same thing, tear this off. No sticky on the back. I'll add my own. I'm going to tuck her in right here next to the frame. And we have our other lady. Where is she that I colored? Where are Oh, here she is. Sorry about that. My husband's at work. He doesn't, or he's forgotten that I'm still, that I'm still alive. We'll call him later. Just want to tuck this one in. Kind of in between these layers here, right about here. What I'm going to do is just tear some more of this away. As I see, I kind of don't need it. I've got a little red right there, so just tear a little more of that paper away. Okay, and the next thing I want to do here is add my, my beautiful. Be careful when you take the sticky off the back of the beautiful. You don't want to bend this or break this. Since it is longer, that's possible. So um, I just want to tear enough away that I can add some glue. And again, I don't mind. I don't mind titling this photo "Beautiful" either. Um, like I said, I have enough siblings that um, they will love this picture scrap like this. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is just add a few flowers. I've got a, a few random pieces of wood icons from the Belle Rouge as well, Carrie. I don't have that number, but I'm going to use this little. Um, this little flower. There's also like a mirror and a key and a little antique comb, hair comb um, in there as well. You've got a little black silhouette that's really pretty. My computer keeps going to sleep. That's also really pretty. But uh, for now, I just want to add a few flowers. This is package number 580568 and also 580575. Along with that, I want to add the Satan Crystals that go with the Belle Rouge collection. And that is 579357. And also the Brads that go with the Belle Rouge collection. That is uh, 579296. So I just want to kind of move all this ex these extra pieces out of my way. Sort of add the final touches now. Um, the Cascade of Flowers and the extra little pieces that that go in with that. So what I want to do is just add my little wood icon. And I love this little flower. Um, just gives more of the red. I'm moving my title around. Just gives more of the red. And you can see this is kind of shifting, but it will dry. Carry how I'm on time. Okay, I got a few minutes, so Okay, we got flowers. I'm, only gonna, I'm just going to kind of show you. I'm going to go over um, just really quick the uh, actual shadow box. 
not going to take a lot of time to show you that. It's really a simple process. And if anybody wants to ask questions or whatever um, later, you can. I'll try to get it up on my blog pretty quick so that i um, got a little bit more of a step-by-step -step on the blog. But uh, it's just really easy and it is, it's just really nice. And I'm just going to start tucking some flowers in and around here. So you can see I'm tucking them under and, and out. And um, I want to move the color around as well. So kind of get these under here. You can see it's still moving because we're not totally dry yet with our Fabri-Tac. So we got a minute still to play. I'm not going to add a lot of flowers. Just a few. And on my original, I had um, I had just a few little stray flowers from other collections and things that um, I did add. I'm going to grab my little perfume bottle. Because I did. I had this little perfume bottle just kind of stuck in and behind. Oh, let's pull off our white. I'm sorry, I feel like I'm getting out of camera range. Pull that layer off. Sometimes it's easier said than done. It's sticking to me, so. Another little bottle. Kind of in and behind right here. Just have little pieces just kind of kind of protruding out and um, around your page. I want to add a I think I want to add a flower here. And I am changing these up just a little bit from, from what I had in my original. Um, but that's okay. Just get a variety. I'm going to grab a red. Again, I'm using this. These are flying across the room now. just want to keep a variety of color and keep that color moving all around your page so moving this red around I'm going to add it right under that, that last layer right there as all this is hard to see on camera but it just really makes a huge difference um, in person to have all this on your page especially since it's a canvas and it would make a really pretty gift for somebody um, or actually even in your own house and the way you do these um, shadow boxes you can stand them up or you can actually hang them on the wall either way Let's move our flowers and then I want to move on to a few little um, bling pieces everything needs a little bling and I love these new Satan crystals um, with the Bella Rouge collection. Each one is a little bit different. Um, each collection has a little bit different um, style in these, so I just really like them um, for this. I think these are my all-time faves as far as the, um, and this is just, I'm going to have to put a little more glue on that. And again, I'm just moving this color around, add a little teal one kind of under the layer here. Deliberately go in and out of your layers to add a little interest that um, it just looks really cool. I want to grab this little brad here. I'm just going to cut their little legs off. I just, I kind of just snip them off. They go flying across the room. And then I have to sweep them up or I'll step on them. So I've just got the little lady space. Just add a little glue back there. Kind of tuck that in right about here. But you can see the, the object of this is just to kind of tuck these in and around just to give that little extra dab of detail. Because it truly is all in the details. Just every little detail that you add adds that layer of dimension or texture or whatever. Just makes it all so beautiful. So just add that one right about there. But you kind of get the gist of that. That's sort of how I did that. So what I want to do really quick is um, I'm going to have a little more add a little more glue back here because this is just not. I'm, I guess I didn't get my layer thick enough to grab the frame. 
Right just about like that. Okay, so you can see that's that's from today, and this was our original. Move all this out of my way. So you can see really close, not not twins, but but really close. So um, what I want to do now is move on and show you the actual shadow box that I made and how I did that. And I can show you really quick once I drop everything in the floor. Okay. The secret to these shadow boxes are these little pieces of wood. And I grabbed these at my local, you can get them at your local hardware store, uh, Home Depot, Lowe's, um, any, any, um, hardware type store you can grab these this is just a frame that i picked up at hobby lobby this is an 8 by 10 frame um, i'm gonna raise you up just a little bit so that i can get a little a little bit more room okay yeah i probably totally screwed my camera up now but anyway i want you to be able to kind of see um wait this to the side kind of see what i've done here this is just a regular 8x10 frame. You can see the glass is already in there. When you have a frame, um, your glass will actually be able to come out. I go in with just a little bit of glue, just my Fabri-Tac, and I glue the glass to the back portion of the frame. You can see I've already added the wood here with just one screw on each side. I'm just going to kind of show you how it works to start with. So you lay your frame in, or you lay your, your canvas in, and it just barely catches that wood. So when you turn it over, you have a perfectly framed shadow box, glass covered, and um, you paint your wood black so that it looks, it you know, there's you can't see out. It's totally black on the sides there. So what I did is I actually measured my opening, which was an 8 by 10 opening, and these pieces of wood I actually marked and cut you can see for an 8 by 10 you want to cut the wood of course 10 inches long for your side pieces you want to cut it 10 inches long and then the thickness of your wood for both ends so you if you're if you're an inch thick or three quarters of an inch thick you're going to add that times two to your length so if it's if it's 10 inches and you have a three quarter inch piece here, then you're going to add an additional inch and a half. So each side piece will end up being 11 and a half inches. And so what I do is just kind of lay them on my frame just because I like to eyeball everything. And then I measure my inside measurement. And that's going to give you your cut for these inside pieces. And I kind of do that with, with each individual frame because even though they say 8 by 10 or 5 by 7, they sometimes do vary. And the, the great part about this with Prima's new products is if you have the black gesso, one coat of black gesso on this wood will give you this black coverage so that you are good to go on your frame. So what you want to do, once you have that painted, and you have those laid in place. I add a little fabric tack to the back to kind of stick it down. And then I go in with a drill. And, I, and my husband does this for me. And I've, I've, I, I kind of do it myself. I'm used to working with drills. But if you need your husband to do it, just drill yourself a pilot hole carefully through your, all the way through your frame. And then attach with one screw on each side. I then add my I then add my canvas, and you're, what you're going to do is you're going to slide it in just a little bit so that this 8 by 10 so that your hole is a little bit smaller than an 8 by 10 So when you lay your 8 by 10 canvas on there, you have just a little something to catch that there. What you're going to do is grab your hot glue gun, and I don't have mine plugged in, but you're going to grab your hot glue gun and just just very lightly you're going to do a little line of hot glue and that's going to hold that right down now if you want to go to the trouble to use the little spinners that you can buy for the backs of photo frames you can do that you can screw those in and you can slide that around to hold that in i just use the hot glue you can even use fabri-tac it just takes a little longer for it to dry 
you then take the original back to your actual frame take that back lay it back on top of your canvas and then again I use hot glue I just glue that right down I ink any of my edges to make it really neat on the back and then make sure that as far as being able to hang it on the wall your actual um, wall hanger you want to use and you see you buy these two in the hardware store in Walmart but you grab your little your little hanger I'm not sure exactly what you call these but uh, sawtooth mounts they're calling them and you want to screw into the actual wood be sure that you're doing it into the wood where you have it screwed down so you can carry that weight this is going to be really heavy with this heavy frame and then all that you have on your canvas uh, and you'll have to use a longer nail head because it does kind of sink in a little bit right there but if you leave your nail out just a little bit from your wall then um, you're good to go it hangs right on your wall and you have a beautiful canvas with every um, everything that you make any uh, any inexpensive frame that you can find you can use so um, that is that is it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me. I'm going to go ahead and pan up. Um, let me turn you around. I got you upside down. Sorry. Um, but uh, anyway, if you have any questions, just let me know. I've managed to pull my camera down, so I'm holding. It like I'm doing a selfie, I'm holding it with my hand. So uh, anyway, thank y'all so much for joining me, and uh, don't forget to join Lee Moore Weber on Thursday night and. Um, Anyway, I will see y'all again next time. Thanks again, y'all, so much for joining me. Have a great day. Bye.